Now, before we get down here into MicroPoly, let's take a quick break, and we're going to discuss this Dynamics menu up here. So let's go ahead and close out of our brush menu, and if you want to, double-click these little dividers over here, and then you can take your Dynamics menu, grab that white circle, and just drag it over here. Let's take our Undo slider and slide all the way back, or if you're just starting on this video, go to the palette here, choose Plain 3D, hit Make Poly Mesh 3D, and now we have uh, just a basic poly mesh plane in here. Now if we turn on the floor, you're going to see with the Y turned on, which is on by default, that's going to represent your floor plane. So you're going to see our, our plane is kind of sitting upright, Y up, on our floor plane here. So let's talk a little bit about dynamic basics. So by default, what we have turned on is on brushed floor collision and gravity. On brushed is about a brush setting, which we're not to yet, but if we're just going to be running the simulation, which is right down here, uh, with floor collision on and gravity turned on, if I hit this button now, it's going to simulate <laughs> this plane right into the floor. Now you're going to see immediately all the polygons just kind of collapse on each other. So if I undo that, just hit Control Z. And let's also go through here. I guess it's pretty bright. Uh, we can say, let's add a little bit of self collision. So we turn self collision, say, up to two, and then run the simulation. You're going to see now it kind of pushes these uh, pieces of geometry apart. So another thing you might notice is this gravity runs really fast. So let's go ahead and slow this gravity down by taking this gravity strength and turning it down just a bit and then hitting run simulation. And now you'll get a little bit of a smoother result. And while we're running this, let's go ahead and give it some thickness so we can see it a little bit better like we did earlier with our dynamic thickness. So geometry, dynamic, just crank up that thickness a little bit. And by default, smooth subdiv is gonna, of two is gonna be on. And you know what? Let's go ahead and leave it on. So now, if we turn off our poly frame, and let's switch back to like a matcap gray or something, we can run the simulation, and now as this runs, you're going to get a very nice smooth result, and you're going to have dynamic thickness. Now, if you want to stop the simulation at any time, just tap in your screen, or just hit run simulation again, or hit escape on your keyboard, or hit spacebar. Uh, any one of those will stop the simulation. Let's go ahead and get uh, control Z. And that's the basics of simulation. And don't be confused that you have to run it on like, uh, perfect quads or anything like that. Gravity or dynamic simulation will run on anything. So if I hit the comma key here, go into tool, and let's go ahead and grab the dog Z tool and hit the comma key to get rid of that. Uh, we still have our floor plane on, and because we have floor collision on, uh, all these settings stay the same. These are all global settings, by the way. So we have our mesh selected here. It's the only subtool in our scene. So if we go through here and we have gravity turned on, floor collision, and we run the simulation, uh, the dog is just going to simulate gravity, bam, right into the floor. So I'll go ahead and hit Control Z. And that's the basics of gravity simulation. Now there's a lot of other things we can do with dynamic simulation, but again, that's kind of a good start. Now let's go back to our PolyMesh 3D plane we were playing with, and let's go ahead and increase that thickness just a bit so we can see it just a little bit better. There we go. Now there's another way we can control this geometry, and that is if I hit B, T, this goes to our transpose brushes. We've already talked about regular transpose, we even touched a little bit on smart transpose, but what we haven't talked about is cloth transpose. So if I hit B, T, and then C to choose cloth transpose, essentially what that did was go up here to the brush options, and then underneath here there's elasticity, and there's a simulation iterations. Any brush in ZBrush that has simulation iteration turned on is going to tell ZBrush, hey, run these simulation iterations right here at 100%. Now you can dial this back if you want, if you want to drop this to like 50% simulation iterations and have the brush take over a little bit more. But you're going to notice if I go to B for the brush menu and then C to narrow it down to all the brushes that start with C, there's some cloth brushes in here. And if I choose like cloth twister, and again we go back into our brush settings, elasticity, you're going to see simulation iterations is up at 100, which means when I use this brush, it's going to pull this around and treat the geometry that it's being acted upon as if it's made out of cloth. So if I undo that and go back to BTC for our transpose cloth brush, and you don't have to keep pressing that. If you hit Q to go into draw mode and then uh, W to go back into transpose, it's going to choose transpose cloth until you tell it otherwise. Otherwise, So in this case, if I push this down, it's going to collapse uh, and collide with the floor. And I can go through here and I can rotate this around. And I can even non-uniformly scale it and have it kind of collapse in on itself. And essentially, what this is doing when it's running a dynamic simulation is if I undo all this, and I'm going to take the smooth subdiv and turn it down to zero, turn on polyframe here, is it's looking at 
all of these edges and it's maintaining relationships, it's maintaining surface area. So when this moves around or collapses, it's, it's constantly running calculations on every movement. And in fact, in this case, it's running 100 simulations per movement telling ZBrush maintain these edge relationships so that when this thing expands or contracts or folds in on each other or collides with another object, these edge relationships stay relative to each other or maintain their surface area so that it acts like cloth. Now there are some limitations to this. So if we undo back, let's go over here and let's go to append and we're just going to grab a Sphere 3D. So we'll select the Sphere 3D, go ahead in here and just scale this down. And you're going to see when I scale it down, because we have transpose cloth, it's going to treat this object like it's made out of cloth. So let's avoid that. Let's go to BTR and we'll scale this down and make it a little bit smaller. And then Alt tap your plane here. I'm going to hold down Shift to snap to the side and then hold down Shift to rotate this 90 degrees and we'll move this up. Now you're going to notice if I select the, the sphere and then move it up, this uh, floor plane is going to follow it. If you want the floor plane to stay down where it's supposed to be or where it is originally, you can hit draw and then change your elevation to zero. That's going to snap that floor plane to world zero. So now as I move this up and take my plane and move this above, the floor plane isn't going to follow. It's just going to stay down there. So now that I have two objects in my scene, if I go through here and I have uh, gravity and floor collision turned on, if I run the simulation, uh, it's just going to fall right through that object. It has no idea it's there. What I need to do is go ahead and hit Control-Z, go over here and turn on collision volume, and it's going to look at every other subtool in my scene. In fact, if I have multiple, if I have this one and I duplicate this off and I scale this down and I move it over here, so now I have two objects in my scene. As long as I choose this plane, and then uh, in this case, I can turn collision volume on and off, or I can just hit recalculate. It'll go through and recalculate my collision volume. So now when I run the simulation, it'll recognize that and behave accordingly. And again, while it's simulating, ZBrush is telling those edges 100 times a second or 100 times a movement to make sure it's maintaining those original relationships. Now, if I have my gravity cranked up to like 40 and run the simulation, uh, it's going to get some really, really bad stretching. So when you come in here with the default gravity of 10 and you run a simulation, you may see that it stretches pretty badly on some of these areas here. There's two ways to avoid this. Number one, you have simulation iteration set to 100. You can crank this up to 1,000 and then on per movement, it'll, it'll calculate 1,000 times a movement. So now when you run the simulation at gravity strength of 10, It'll run at 10 and then it'll also uh, drape with a lot less stretching because it's calculating so many calculations per movement that it's maintaining those relationships and that original surface area very well. Now there's another way you can combat this. I can take the simulation iterations and choose go back to 100. And again, if we run the simulation at gravity of 10, you'll get some stretching. However, if you just run the gravity at a lower result, so maybe gravity of say like 2, and then run the simulation, that's going to run it slow enough to give this 100 calculations enough time to maintain those relationships. Same thing as if I'm using BTC or transpose cloth. If I move it really fast, you're going to get a lot of stretching. If I go through here and move it slowly, that'll give the simulation or the algorithm enough time to make those calculations and maintain those relationships. And if I hit Q to go back into draw mode and do BC K, which is cloth hook, I can pull slowly and that'll kind of, again, it'll maintain those edge relationships or I can pull very quickly and it'll allow a lot of stretching. Now this isn't like real life where if you have a sheet or a towel, where if you pull a towel really quickly, uh, it's not going to stretch. But because it's 3D and we have limitations on the number of calculations happening, you can actually cause it to do unrealistic things if you move fast enough. Again, to combat this, you can crank your simulation iterations up, and then as you move this faster, it'll go, nope, I'm calculating a lot, so I'm going to have a better, easier time maintaining those relationships. Or another thing you can do, I'll drop this back down to 100, just go through here and just move this slower and allow enough time for those relationships to be maintained by your calculations. Let's go ahead and undo that. There's another option in here called Firmness. So let's go ahead and turn off our polyframe. 
switch back to our startup material. And uh, let's go ahead and run gravity at this. Uh, you know what? We'll crank this back up to 10 to make it run faster, and then we'll crank up our simulation iterations. So when I run this, this will be the result. And you know what? Let's also go down here and turn on smooth subdiv of 2. So this will give us a preview of what it would look like if we had our claw simulation run on the low res geo and then subdivided it twice. You'll get a little bit nicer wrinkles happening through here. So here it is at firmness of 3. Let's undo that and say firmness of 1 and run the simulation. And you can see you're going to get a very, very silky cloth result. So I'm going to go up here, let's turn off the floor. I'm going to do Shift S to store a screenshot. We'll undo that. We'll set the firmness to 3, run the simulation again. And now you can see this cloth is behaving a little bit more like a denim. Let's do Shift S. Let's do firmness level of 5 undo that and then rerun the simulation and now you're gonna see we're getting a very leather like consistency so depending on what firmness you have selected that'll give you a very silky to a little bit more of a cottony or a denim all the way to a leather type of cloth simulation so let's hit undo one more time let's hit control N to clear our canvas and if we go over here to liquefy, if we turn this on and we have gravity turned on and we run the simulation, nothing's going to happen. What liquefy needs is a change in direction of your edges in order to play off of. So if I go through here with my move brush and I just kind of pull some dimples into the surface area here, and then I run gravity with liquefy and run the simulation. Let's go ahead and turn our simulation iterations back down to 100, by the way. And turn our firmness down to, say, 2. So now when this runs, you're going to see it's going to look like it's kind of falling through water. Let's go ahead and pull this one down as well. So if we just do regular gravity, it waits until you see it sees a collision object in order to act on it. So it'll just fall, and then it'll collide and drape, very much like cloth. However, if we turn on liquefy and run, you're going to see it's going to fall as if it's falling through water. And in fact, if we pull a little harder on this side, we can kind of force the direction it's going to go in. So if I run the simulation now, there we go. So as it falls through, it's going to act like it's just an underwater sheet, and it has a very much more liquid result as it's falling. But remember, it needs something, an imperfection in the surface, in order to run. Now, while we're running that, there's another interesting thing you can do. You can go in here to your layers, and there's a record deformation animation. So if I turn that on, and then I run my simulation and just let it go, and then once it's done, I can go ahead and stop the simulation, untap record, and then put this on my desktop as an animation, or just name it whatever you want. We'll go ahead and save. So now if I un or if I just move, it'll snap back to where it was originally. So what I can do here under the layers is I can now import that MDD file. So I can import that animation, and now I have a new layer, and it went ahead and opened up the timeline for me. You can find that underneath Movie, Timeline, Show. So you can turn that on or off, but it turns on by default automatically. So now if you just set a point in your timeline, so we'll just go ahead and tap on our timeline to set a point. As we play this with this layer selected, as I go past that point, it's going to animate my sheet that I animated here. So I can pinpoint exactly where I want to start and stop this animation. So if it's like, oh, you know what? This was perfect, but then it fell off. No problem. All I got to do is back this up, go ahead and store it here. And if I like this, I can go say, hey, bake all. And now those vertex positions are going to be baked into this object. And if we go back into our geometry here, this is all just dynamic as well. The thickness and the smoothness of it, if I turn that off, this is the real geometry. So I can turn that on and off as, at will, and I can even go in here to dynamic, turn smoothness down to zero. I can go in here to micropoly. We haven't talked about micropoly yet, but it's very cool. I can turn this to chain mail. And if we undo back to uh, before we baked the layer here, as I play this animation here, because it's just dynamically smoothed, I can literally go in here, turn smoothness down to zero, turn the micropoly to chain mail. And on the fly, it'll render chain mail on this cloth as it interacts. But again, it's just dynamic. I can go through here and I can change this to cha change this from chain mail to a weave pattern or to tubes. And again, still dynamically simulate. Or 
if I don't feel like dynamically simulating. And just go over here to this layer and say, with it selected, just say delete that layer. And go back here to B, C, K for a cloth hook brush. And I can pull this plane around and simulate it or hit B, T, C for a transpose cloth and have it run into our collidable objects down here. So it'll collide with these objects and all of this dynamic stuff I can change on the fly. I can change a different micropoly to chain mail here, or I can turn micropoly off. I can turn on smooth subdiv thickness. And again, as I'm colliding this with these collidable objects, it's all updating on the fly.